By supporting our channel you support legal content on YouTube. Subscribe, click the bell and leave a like. We wish you a pleasant viewing. In the middle of the roughest ocean on the planet, surrounded by thousands of kilometers of salt water, there hides an ancient jungle. A forest that is forever green, often shrouded in mist. It scales the slopes of old volcanoes to trap water carried in the clouds. This dew-drenched jungle clings to the mountains and volcanoes on these small islands, constantly pummeled by the sea winds. These are the oldest rainforests on Earth the remnants of a lost world. Today, they're inhabited by some of the strangest and most elusive of creatures. In the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, strange laurel forests extend across a handful of remote, scattered islands. The Azores, Madeira and the Canary Islands are part of a region known as Macaronesia, the Happy Islands. The Canary Islands, together with the rest of Macaronesia, are more than 15 million years old. All of them are volcanic in origin, and none have ever been joined to any continent. They were born in the solitude of the ocean and have remained isolated and lonely forever. When these islands emerged from the sea as a result of volcanic eruptions, Europe, North Africa and much of the rest of the planet was blanketed with an enigmatic subtropical rainforest. Lost in the midst of the seas, Madeira, the Azores and the Canary Islands were, at that time, nothing more than a handful of tiny volcanic rocks beaten by the sun and lashed by wind, sea and rain. But it was not long before the 20 million year old forest of the mainland would conquer these remote Atlantic islands. 15 million years ago, Ocean currents and animals carried seeds from the major continents, 
arriving by chance on these small islands far from their native shores. And this was the birth of the laurel forests, lost within the vastness of the Atlantic Ocean. While glaciation was changing the climate of Europe and North Africa became a desert, the forests in the Azores, Madeira and the Canary Islands stood strong. In fact, the laurel forest is considered a fossil forest. Here, about 25 species of trees that have barely changed in all that time survive to this day. It is a window into the tertiary period, a trip back to the landscapes that thrived on the planet 20 million years ago. But how is it that they endured on these islands? What allowed them not only to survive, but to flourish in such remote places? The answer is in the wind and the sea. The laurel forest, which survives as a kind of botanical relic, clinging to the volcanic escarpments of the Atlantic islands, owes its existence to the trade winds that cross the Atlantic Ocean. Winds and ocean each bring the moisture and the correct temperature the forest needs to survive. As the northwest trade winds cross the ocean, they collect moisture from the surface of the sea and carry it with them. These relentless winds are the airborne highways of the shearwaters, skimming the waves in search of fish and squid. These seabirds nest and breed on the loneliest islets and islands of the Canaries, such as the Chinijo archipelago, where they land under the cover of night. Tens of thousands of shearwaters nest on ledges and in the nooks and cracks of the volcanic rock. They find their young in the darkness, bringing them a feast of fresh fish. The trade winds also push the birds further out to sea. They're responsible for the westernmost colony of Eleonora's falcon, found on the island of Alegranza. Eleonora's falcon parents feed their chicks by hunting small migrating birds blown off course by the trade winds. These seahawks make use of air currents to climb hundreds or even thousands of meters in search of food. The same wind that keeps the hawk airborne crashes into the islands loaded with moisture at altitudes of between 400 and 1200 meters. 
wet and cool, these winds batter the volcanoes of the Canaries without mercy. And it is just the area where the winds make landfall that's the territory of the laurel. With humidity close to 80% and annual temperatures between 15 and 19 degrees centigrade, the conditions are perfect for this primeval forest to thrive. It is precisely this wind that millions of years ago blew insects and birds to these lonely and silent forests. As a result of their isolation, new animal species originated there. On remote islands, far from any continental influence, the number of endemic species is very high. This is the case of the Canary Islands. Plants and animals that colonize remote islands tend to differentiate rapidly. A good example of this differentiating phenomenon is the European chaffinch, which has, since arriving on the Canary Islands over a million years ago, split into three subspecies, each with a very different appearance. These forests offer a great wealth of unique plants. There are more than 500 species of plants that are unique to the Canary Islands. What's more, the islands preserve an ancient world with trees that have not changed their appearance in millions of years. The fruits of some trees, such as the vignatigo, are real treats for some recently arrived species, such as the brown rat. This invading newcomer will often eat these fruits just when, due to the process of maturation, they are full of alcohol. The rats get drunk and end up falling from the trees. Although far from the tropics, this jungle shares many similarities with tropical rainforests, such as the density of its foliage that barely lets the sunlight pass. These trees grow to between 15 and 25 meters high. The forest floor below, as well as the branches and trunks of the trees, are draped with lichens and mosses. The birds that inhabit the tranquil laurel forest, like finches and robins, have a generous, velvety territory in which to make their nests hidden from view. These small birds are used to the frequent rains that lash the laurel forest. But here, there is another kind of rain, one that doesn't fall from the sky. The unassuming carpet of mosses and lichens that the robins visit play a role of vital importance for the laurel forest. It is responsible for trapping moisture from the clouds, a phenomenon known as horizontal rain.
the great quantities of water carried by the winds that crash into the islands do not only fall as rain. It is also trapped molecule by molecule by the lichens and mosses that cover the forest. The effectiveness of this process is such that it makes available three times the amount of water that falls as rain throughout the year. The importance of this horizontal rain is most significant in summer when almost 100% of the water that sustains the laurel forest comes from what the mosses and lichens capture. Thanks to these humble plants, streams keep bubbling and puddles where Bolly's pigeons drink and bathe are maintained. Bolly's pigeons are unique to the Canary Island laurel forests. They are shy and elusive birds, and almost the only time they can be observed is when they come to drink at one of the few puddles that survive the summer drought. These birds rarely leave the forests. They feed, breed, and hide among the branches. In this lost world, everything is connected. It was the wind that brought everything to these happy islands, and plants and animals are closely linked. Some flowers, such as this endemic foxglove, depend on the canary flycatcher and other birds for their reproduction. The coming and going of the birds in search of nectar results in efficient pollination year after year. The complexity of relationships increases where the limited number of predators are concerned. The forest's isolation has prevented it being conquered by carnivorous mammals or snakes. The only hunters that arrived here were birds, and there are not many of those. The Eurasian sparrowhawk has evolved into a subspecies that is a little smaller than its continental cousin. That said, it is just as good a hunter. Sparrowhawks hunt within the forest, tracking small birds that flit between the trees. Flycatchers, blackbirds and blue tits are their usual snacks. This year, four eggs have hatched. Such a reduced population of birds in the laurel forest cannot support a large number of sparrowhawks. And bringing up four chicks every year is a very labor-intensive task. It's possible that not all of them will survive. One population that never lacks for food is the multitude of tiny creatures living in the leaf litter and among the moss.
on the island of Garajonay alone live about a thousand species of invertebrates, the vast majority of them in the laurel forest. Land snails represent one of the highest proportions of endemic species in the Canaries. It is estimated that there are about 250 different species, of which about 80% are endemic to the archipelago. Glass snails, of which there are about 20 species, may look like slugs, but in fact they have a small, fragile shell visible on their backs. Glass snails cannot hide inside their shells like other snails do if the environment becomes dry, and so they can only live in damp and shady places such as the laurel forest. The laurel forest is also home to another unique pigeon. The laurel pigeon eats fruit, seeds and buds like Bolly's pigeon, but prefers to make its nest in rocky areas near the forest. Of the birds that live in these mist-draped woods, blackbirds and the two endemic pigeons are especially important in the forest's continual propagation. This is because only they are large enough to be able to swallow the fleshy fruits of the trees and then regurgitate the seeds intact and ready to germinate. But all is not harmony in the laurel forest. Since rats arrived on the islands a little over a century ago, they have become a detrimental predator of the eggs of endemic bird species, especially the laurel pigeons with their nests on the cliffs. Nearly 75% of their eggs are consumed by the rats. The Canary Island buzzard shares the cliffs with the pigeons and, to some extent, is their ally. It is the only large predator on the island capable of eliminating the rats that now live here. The fledgling buzzards feed on the rats and also on birds and large lizards their parents find by patrolling the lower, warmer parts of the islands, a good distance from the laurel forest. Nearby, on the green swathed mountain, perched amidst the wet foliage of the laurel forest, the sparrowhawks have succeeded in raising all four of their chicks this year. Under the dense canopy and among the forest branches, shrouded in clouds, millions of drops of water are trapped by the mosses and lichens. It is merely the beginning of a complex chain of relationships that connects thousands of different species, many of them unique, that have, for more than 15 million years, lived in isolation in the middle of the vast ocean. Thank you for watching. If you liked the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a like and comment. 
Support legal content on YouTube.